finally. The tyrant's secret files. What's it all mean? <sighs> that's what it would be like to be a secret agent. Okay. So that's what it would be like to be human. Wanna go for a walk? So that's what it would be like to be a dog. So that's what it would be like to have dreams. If you had to categorize what you just saw into one genre of book or movie, what would you say? If you said mystery, good for you. But the truth is, little was done right there to even let you know that it was a mystery. Generating mystique in a story is an art that goes far beyond generating confusion or simply leaving questions unanswered in a story. It's a complex layering of questions and answers, an intricate web of smoke and mirrors. So, you want to write some mystery. Maybe it's a strict mystery story that would fall specifically under that genre. Or maybe you just want to add a mysterious element to your pre-existing storyline. Either way, I'm the Roadside Writer, and I'm here to help you on your journey to becoming a master of mystery. Welcome back to my series where I dare you to have fun writing. This time, we're going to be working on mysteries. Here are three interactive activities to help you generate the allure of the unknown in your story. Remember to check out the description of this video before you get started. There's a free worksheet included so you can follow along with what I'm doing. Subscribe to my website for access to my full library of worksheets for these interactive videos I do. And if you'd like to support what I do with The Roadside Writer, please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon become a patron and help me get rid of the banner on the lower part of the screen. You can subscribe on my website, like I said, which also gets you some cool perks. And if you need more intense writing help than what you can get in my free weekly YouTube videos, check out my course, The Basics of Plotting a Novel, now only $20. Activity number one, pick your reveal. First things first, I want you to turn out your pockets and make sure you don't have a one-way ticket to Plot Hole City. If you do, tear it up and burn it, because we are not going there. This is why we're going to plan from end to beginning. Those of you that have seen my other writing help videos know I'm a big fan of doing this to prevent you from accidentally putting your foot in your mouth with a big old plot hole. The first thing you need to do in this situation is pick one of the most important elements of a mystery. What it is that's mysterious, what's eventually going to be revealed in your story. This is often referred to as the big reveal. Basically what you're going to do is pick one aspect of your plot that you don't want. You're not going to share specifics about this aspect of your story until the reveal. You can give clues, but you're not going to outright ever have a character or your narrator say this aspect of your story. Readers and characters will be kept in the dark. This is the cornerstone around which we will swath the veil of mystique. But Justin, I hear the wails through the night. My plot has so many intricate details. How do I know which one to pick to be the reveal? Here's a good rule of thumb that will never let you down. The reveal should be an aspect of your story that packs an emotional punch for your characters. Look at the core themes of your story and the values of your characters. Make it something related to that. Do you have a character hell-bent on locating his or her biological parents? Get your evil scheming cap on because that's the perfect kind of detail you're going to want to keep away from characters and readers to generate mystery. Maybe the person they seek is someone they already know, but that step comes later. For now, you're just choosing which aspect of your story you're going to basically remove knowledge of only to be revealed later. The key feature here is emotional impact. No matter how cool or interesting this detail is that you're, om that you're omitting to be your reveal, nothing beats a good punch in the heart when the truth finally comes out. If your book centers around the ethics of cloning, maybe one of the scientists running the study is unknowingly a clone himself. If you're writing a revenge story, hide the identity of the person who wronged your protagonist. It was his companion, anyone? So here's where I'm gonna give you a minute to fill out the first activity on your worksheet, which is just to choose an aspect of your story to be your eventual reveal. This is a good spot to pause the video and fill that out. And when you come on back, I will give you a not so great example of an answer to this activity and a better one so that you have a frame of reference to work with. Pause, unpause. So here's a not so great example. Say we're dealing with a plot about an explorer who's hired to delve into a long lost civilization. And the aspect of the story I'm going to choose to be my reveal is that a rival explorer to my protagonist is actually his half-sister. Shocking? Yes. But let's say the theme of this plot is focused more around the exploration of the unknown and that kind of mystical ancient society 
If that's the focus, then having something dealing with the protagonist's family that's not related to that core theme or the protagonist's values doesn't actually generate mystery, it's just a plot twist. So let's take this same plot. The protagonist is an explorer hired to check out this ancient civilization. And let's say that the aspect I'm gonna remove from the story this time is that the civilization is actually not lost. It's actually contained or imprisoned somewhere and very dangerous. Now this plays directly on the theme of exploration and that mystical ancient past. This is something that we can plant clues for and when the readers and protagonists get an inkling that, hold on, something's not right here. It doesn't seem like these people have been gone for that long. Some mystery is going to be kicked up. Activity two. Now you're going to project the changes that omitting this reveal are going to cause in your story. And this step is going to actually help you generate some of your mysterious plot if you haven't already. It's a simple open-ended activity. All you need to do is write a few sentences of speculation. First, imagine your plot as a straightforward progression. Your characters move from point A to B to C to D to the end. And everyone knows everything there is to know about the plot. Now, take that one detail you chose as your reveal and basically pluck it out of the plot because your characters and readers are not going to know about it. Now, answer this question. How does this detail being absent from your plot change its progression? How will people behave differently? How will events play out differently because everyone doesn't know this? This one crucial thing that relates to your If you've done the previous activity correctly, omitting this detail should completely change the progression of the story. And pause. Okay, we're back. So this is where my first choice for a reveal falls flat. The protagonist having his half-sister as a rival is going to change the plot, sure, but it's not going to generate any mystery related to the themes of exploring ancient civilizations. In the end, it'll probably catch readers by surprise, but it will also probably leave them wondering why that detail was kept from them when it has nothing to do with the core themes of the book. The second option from Activity 1 works much better in this situation. The protagonist not knowing that this ancient civilization is actually still alive changes everything and it does relate to the theme. It'll cause tension and confusion for readers and characters as they get closer to the understanding that, hold on, these people are still around. Why was this hidden from them? Why was the explorer hired to look into this civilization as if they were lost when really they're still there? The characters may start to second guess their sanity or the intentions of those who hired them. And this generates a, not only a lot of mystery, but a lot of great potential character interactions and events that center around the mystery. Activity three, sprinkle some breadcrumbs. The final step in my guide to literary illusion involves putting together a few more pieces of that beautiful plot you've got in that beautiful head of yours. Now that you know what you're ultimately going to reveal in your story and what kind of changes that generates in the plot leading up to that reveal, in general sense, it's time to get baking. You're gonna need some tasty breadcrumbs to lead your characters and therefore readers in the right direction and sometimes the wrong one. Here, you're gonna craft three clues that are going to guide your characters and therefore your readers ultimately towards your reveal with a little detour. Here's the most important thing about these breadcrumbs. You want your readers to know that they taste good, but not exactly what kind of bread it is. In other words, towards the conclusion of your book, your readers should have their own theories about what they think is going on, but they should not know for certain how it will resolve. If you make your clues too obvious or deliberate, and readers are gonna be 100% sure of how this book is going to end a couple chapters early, they may lose interest. The point of a mystery, either strict, strictly in the genre or just a mysterious element to a different story, is the guessing game, theorizing in the hopes that your superior detective skills will bring you to the right conclusion. The thrill of the hunt. So how do we as writers achieve this balance when writing a mystery? Here's something to always remember. As a writer, you have a very underrated tool at your disposal that a lot of people tend to forget about, your characters. In crafting these clues, you're going to make two that point your characters in the right direction towards what the conclusion really is, and, and one that points them away from that conclusion, a misdirection, a misinterpretation. You'd be surprised how many readers will be fooled by a confident protagonist with a sound theory. So here you're going to create three clues that push your characters in some direction relating to your reveal. Two, that clue them into what the reveal actually is, and one, that leads them astray. Pause your video here while you complete the activity, and when you come on back, I, I will provide you with only good ones this time, because it would be silly for me to come up with bad ones for the, as an example. Freeze, unfreeze. So, 
here are three clues that I came up with using the example plot that I came up with in the previous activities. Clue number one, the protagonist discovers technology above ground, away from a dig site. There's no way it could have gotten there on its own, not that they understand. This clue is going to lead my characters in this plot about ancient society exploration in the direction of the reveal. They're going to be suspicious. How did this stuff get here? And it's just going to give them a little bit of insight. Clue number two. The protagonist catches a couple shadows just around the corner in an ancient ruin, but he cannot catch up. Could have been the other explorers, or... That clue is also going to, to lead my characters in the proper direction towards the reveal that, hey, the society is not really lost, it's just hidden. Clue number three. The protagonist finds a portable research lab set up in the ancient ruin, run by the very company that hired him to investigate this civilization. They're converting ancient technology into advanced weapons. Now he guesses that it was them that he was being outrun by the whole time. They're the ones who've been moving the technology around, but then him. This clue misleads my characters. It, it makes them, you know, think that everything before all the clues was just the other company moving around in the ruins. And it kind of redirects the reader's attention towards this other mystery. Of what's this organization really after? And it allows the big reveal of the, the society is still alive somewhere hidden to kind of fly under the radar a little bit more. Note that I came up with three uh, clues for the purposes of demonstration, but you might want to come up with a lot more. That's all down to personal tastes. If you're writing specifically in the mystery genre, you might even want to pick a couple details in your plot to be reveals and then do the, the other activities as trickle down. So you would start with the first activity and instead of just picking one reveal, you might pick two or three and then you're going to project how all three of these things would change your plot and then you'd come up with at least three clues for your readers for each reveal. Sowing the seeds of a good mystery requires a decent amount of planning beforehand. There is, however, little satisfaction greater than watching readers piece together these little breadcrumbs of information you've been feeding them throughout a story, theorizing on the conclusion, to watch them writhe in confusion, only to bask in the triumph of a false conclusion that came from misinformation planted by you. <clears throat> nice work, Mastermind. Start by choosing your reveal. Remember, this should be something related to your character's core values or the main themes of your story. Then, you're going to project how removing knowledge of this detail from the story is going to affect your characters and readers. You will then generate three clues, events, that are going to happen in your story that are going to lead your characters and readers towards, ultimately, your conclusion with a little detour. So, two clues that lead them towards the conclusion and one that steers them a little bit astray. Employ these tactics to get off to a strong start when planning a mystery in your story. If you like what I do with The Roadside Writer, please support me by liking this video, subscribing, and hitting the bell icon. You can also support me on Patreon, help me get rid of this banner, and improve the overall quality and features in videos and other things that I produce for you guys for writing help and entertainment. If you need more intensive writing help, please subscribe to my website. I do weekly writing tips and previews into other creative projects I'm working on. And check out my course, The Basics of Plotting a Novel. Roadside Writer, out. If you're stuck, stick to these activities and you'll be off to a great start. For instance, this whole time, I've been misdirecting you, leading you to believe I'm still alive and that this isn't just a pre-recorded message. The master of misdirection strikes again. Dead? I've been a dog this whole time. I first teased it in the intro, then throughout the video as I puppeteered the human's body. The roadside writer is no more. Only the canine columnist remains.